Hello, Tom Watkins back from Fitmotion Graphics uh, doing an add-on tutorial for projection mapping. Discovered a couple of things about um, mapping onto uh, more funky shapes. So I got some Coroplast um, and cut that into hexagons. So that's just like for sale signs. Find that online, don't ask me how to get it. And um, go play about with some different ways of mapping that. So first way we do that, uh, so that's wrong clip, is use a template that's exactly the same as the shape that I've made in the room over here. So we'll uh, jump into the output setting and show one way of, of looking at that. So that's made a slice for that. We'll um, so we'll make make a new slice for that, and we'll set that to just actually shimmy this over at the beginning. We'll set that to go off uh, just layer three, and we'll go into the output mapping and do that. I don't know if you remember in the second tutorial I did, I used a linear point mode to adjust onto the flat 2D surface. Not the smartest way of doing that there, uh, so I'll explain why that wasn't uh, wasn't ideal. Um, so linear point mode, well, as you can move all the four columns about, but it doesn't actually adjust these middle points. So I think what I did was I made extra points, move those over, and that's how I adjusted it. Stupid way of doing it. You can um, use perspective mode, and that just that does that automatically. So you see that middle point jumped when you put that into perspective. So with that, you only have the four corners. You adjust those, get those in place, and that automatically um, yeah, moves those middle points for you. So that's a better way of doing these um, flat uh, flat shapes. That's what we're going to use for this first one. So as you only got four points. Um, everyone, every time you adjust one point, it kind of can chuck off the other points a bit. So, um, can take a while to get that spot on, but you know, you've only got four of them, so take your time getting there and yeah, use those arrow keys just to nudge it about until you get that lined up perfect. So we could spend could spend all evening on this, but I'll just get it somewhere near just so we've um, got an idea on that. So there's that one and. There's that one, that's, that'll, that's close enough just for the demonstration. So save that out, and um, once you've made that template, uh, you make I use that template in After Effects to make sure that all my clips that I export fit exactly onto that. So um, then if you get you know, other clips, they'll, as long as they're the same shape as the template, as long as you map that template right, then they should fit exactly onto the thing you're projecting onto. So, that's the way I like to do it uh, primarily, just because you get all the you know the power of After Effects or Cinema, and um, you couldn't you know make those individual shapes spin round just in Resolume. So it's very versatile because it means you know you can do um, all sorts of stuff. But once you're actually in Resolume, it's not quite as versatile because you're kind of stuck with that uh, mapping. And if you do start applying effects, that can chuck that off. So it's one possible way of doing it, you know, you'll need to um, spend more time in your other software getting good clips to put in there, but then once you've got them, you only do one bit of mapping and that applies to, um, you know, the whole thing. Uh, so that's, uh, that's one way of um, mapping on that. So another way of mapping um, would be just to send one image uh, to the full output and just cut it out so it fits uh, onto the shape you project onto. So we'll do that with a source effect. I was going to use that line spin again that I did last time. Uh, Where's that? I was going to use the uh, you know the spinning lines, but I thought as we're here, we'll um, show you another couple of techniques. So I'll go with line scape instead, and uh, make a couple of changes here. Um, tilt that up, tweak the direction a little bit, uh, zoom it out, slow it down, and uh, trunk it up. Uh, what I'm going to try and do here is animate this height to uh, react to the audio. And uh, quickest and easiest way to do that, I find, just use my, use my webcam mic. So that's in um, audio, external, FFT. And you can see that's already going there. But um, if we go into the preferences, uh, bring, bring in audio, and that would be this one here. So this, I've set the external audio to my webcam microphone. Um, I got a separate gain there. You can pump that up when you're practicing, turn it down when you're in a club. And uh, you see that's actually you know bouncing as I speak. So um, got some more uh, features here. You can set it to the high end, uh, mid, we'll stick with the low, and you've got another gain there as well. Um, 
So that'll do us for that clip. Yeah, I was just, just showing you a different way of making clips there. We'll go into the output again. And uh, again, we'll make a new slice for this. And we'll call that lines. And into the inputs, uh, we'll make sure that lines is coming just off layer two. And just make sure I've got these other ones right. Uh, slice two, that should be custom. Um, was custom, was that coming from layer three? Yeah, that was good. So back to the lines. And uh, what we're going to do here is just cut this out so it fits um, around that shape. So we looked at mask before. Mask, uh, if remember, yeah, chops out bits you uh, don't want to keep. Uh, we're going to use crop, which is pretty much the opposite of that. Chops out the bits that you want to get rid of. So um, I didn't use this much before because basically I didn't, um, I'd not looked up how to use it. I thought it was just a square and that's not much use to anyone. But um, I had a look, had a read of the manual and uh, you can actually do a cool some cool stuff with it. So I'm going to drag this just to fit those edges and what you can do is you can uh, double click and that will give you a new uh, point and that means you can cut out any old shape you want and that means you know you can uh, cut out uh, any crazy shape, anything you can think of projecting onto. So I'll just make a couple of points here that are going to um, be the points that we're going to keep and then we'll make some extra ones and make that fit. Good. So, um, speed through that, uh, make those extra points, double click on there, drag that out and cut out the shape that we want. So we've made that outline, so we're uh, blacking out all of those edge bits and keeping the bits that we do want, so that's uh, projecting just onto our uh, um, coroplast hexagons there. Great, so we save that out and oh, I was going to show another thing as well. Um, if we stick a mirror on there, It'll uh, bring up uh, one little problem with this. One, it'll make it a bit uh, prettier, and also it'll highlight a little problem that we can remedy. So, chuck a four-way mirror on there. But you see, if you look in the um, in at the projection, there, it's not actually this middle point. It's not actually in the middle of the of the shape. So we can remedy that. We could, you know, try and um, duplicate or replicate the idea of this um, perspective but a quicker and easier way I think is going the input and just uh, move the bit that we're actually sending so if we change the input that actually moves over that middle point and that means that we just send that uh, just send this part of it to the output and that means that keeps it nice and symmetrical and that's what I'm going for. So uh, that's the second way of doing that is uh, just cutting around uh, the bits you want to keep, getting rid of the bits that you want to lose. But as we're here, we might as well uh, do a third way. We get three layers, so um, might as well go another way as well. And uh, what we'll do here is we'll send it to each of the individual hexagons itself. And I thought this would be uh, the easiest one. It actually caused us um, a fair bit of uh, head scratching. So I got something in the end. I will show that now. So, uh, Control Shift A again is to get to the output. Um, new slice for that. Call that uh, individual. And into the input selection. Uh, we're going from just layer 1 for that. Is that turned up fully? No, we need to turn that up. So, there we go. There's layer 1. And. So we're going to make this go onto each of the individual hexagons. So initially I thought, uh, you know, drag that into the corners, um, get that in place. And what I first tried to do was um, add points. So still in linear mode, add a couple of points, uh, drag that up, I could I'll give that six sides, and, you know, could copy that over. But if you look at that, that actually creates a weird, weird warping on here because it's, you know, distorting the... Um, the video you get these these should be straight lines but it sent it all a bit funky and it, it can look quite cool but it might not be what we're going for so um, yeah, I want to those, keep those lines straight so I think of what's another way of doing it so I thought maybe we can make it uh, bigger than the so make it bigger than the hexagon then chop off these edge bits so I uh, thought you know uh, we could use the crop or the mask so I thought maybe make a mask on that and try and chop that out, um, yeah, something like that. But 
Unfortunately what happens if you then duplicate this one and push that up here, then the mask still affects that one and then so you, know, you can maybe try and mess with the hierarchy, put the that one on top of that one, but then when you try and mask out this bit, you get the same problem. You, know, you need a mask over that bit and just basically couldn't get it to work. Same thing uh, applying to the crop. Um, you know, as soon as you put a crop on there, it applies to everything and you can't chop out the bits that you want. So I'm trying to figure out what's the best way to make this thing a hexagon. Um, and eventually I decided to get out of the advanced output and try doing it actually in just actually in normal Resolume and came up with a workaround in the end and that was using this keystone mask. So again, I'm going to stick that just on the layer. So that's applying to anything that we put on this layer. Um, what, as you can see there, that's a similar thing, cut, cuts out a mask, um, but obviously you can move this about and you can cut out different bits of the video. So um, I made the presets for it here and we'll just stick that, um, so let's get rid of those. We'll stick these, uh, so that's just doing that bottom left corner, bottom right corner, top left and top right, and then, so that's chopped out each of these bits here, and that's made that shape a hexagon. And now anything we put onto that layer, uh, you know, same thing should apply. So again, just a hexagon there. And then if we go jump back into the advanced output, um, if we then duplicate that again, that does actually keep the uh, shape keeps transparency and you can move that over without it interfering with the other slices and um, that works out well. So uh, we could sit here and watch me drag these out and get that in place but that didn't sound like any kind of fun to me so uh, one that I did done already. Uh, save that out and again yeah this looks nice if you get some get some mirror effects on here it's always going to look cool. Again, just applying that to the whole layer, so any clips that do appear in this layer will have that effect, but nothing else will. And so that's the three ways I came up with doing it. So um, each of the individual um, hexagons there, the full output uh, that we've mapped, uh, we did that cool audio react thing as well. And I could just go to the normal line skin. So just by cutting that out by using the crop tool, and then the other way of doing it, which is... Uh, my favourite way of doing it, and that's the um, yeah pre-making all the clips um, in external software, then bringing them in, just doing that one stretch to make sure everything fits there. So um, this is just stuff I was playing about. We've not used those um, hexagons before, so um, uh, you know figured out some workarounds there. So I thought I'd share it with you guys. So thanks for tuning in. You know um, any ideas? If you think you can come up with a better way of doing uh, you know that hexagon cutout, do let me know. Or if you've you know done similar stuff, please give it a share. Or if you've got any other ideas for tutorials, do uh, yeah, let us know in the comments there. But for a minute, uh, Tom Watkins, Fit Motion Graphics. Thanks for joining us. Cheers.